Welcome to the last session of the SDG Zone at Tokyo. I'm Melissa Fleming, Undersecretary General for Global Communications at the United Nations. It's my great pleasure to be with you, albeit virtually, here in the Zone. In the past five sessions, we've been hearing from various speakers on the power of sports and how it contributes to making the world a better place. Today, I am joined by Lu Yamamoto, the mayor of Mibashi City, which has been playing host to South Sudan's Olympic team. Abraham Mayok Maitet Guem, a 1,500-meter runner and a member of South Sudan's Olympic team. Philippe Muller-Worth, UNESCO's executive officer for sport and its sector for social and human sciences and Roxana Marasineanu, a former swimming champion and now France's Minister of Sport. I would like to start with you, Mayor Yamamoto. After your city welcomed the South Sudan team in 2019 for long-term training, the whole world had to shut down because of the COVID-19 pandemic. So Mebashi has spent over a year and a half with these athletes. Some say it marked the first time that a local area in Japan had accepted foreign athletes over such a long term. What has this past year and a half been like for, for and with the team in your city? そして市民と相談し受け入れることにいたしました。まさか私たちもこんなに長くスーダンの選手団が私たちの町の市民として暮らしてくれるとは思いもよりませんでしたので、ちょっと驚いています。でも帰って市民にしてみれば長くいてく
I got a lot of new impressions and uh, got more motivated in uh, the power of sports. Wonderful. Minister Mara Sine Anu, you were both a world champion and an Olympic medalist in your sport of swimming. How do you see the power of sport differently from when you were an athlete to now being the Minister of Sports of France? From my experience as an athlete and Olympic swimmer, um, the sport has helped me to build my own individuality, to help me to affirm it, and also to find a place in uh, the French society. Because I was born in Romania, another country, I came here as a refugee at the age of 10. And thanks to the sport, I am thanks to the people around me in this uh, career as an athlete. Uh, they helped me to learn French, to find a real place uh, in this society, and also to become someone uh, in, this, uh, um, in this country. And um, as an athlete, the sport has uh, the power to uh, go further, uh, always to push the limits of the possible. And um, as a minister, I see my role just uh, uh, and my power as a minister to serve the power of sport. And uh, because the power of sport doesn't change as an individual or for the entire country. So I would like to serve the power of sport as a minister now and to make it possible for more children, for more people to work on um, the effect of sport on equality, on health, on employment, on inclusion, on all the topics also uh, dealing with uh, uh, sustainability. So, um, uh, it's what I try to do as a minister to change the scale uh, of what I have been experiencing as an athlete and to put it, um, to make it aware of all the power of sport, all the society and all the French uh, citizenships. I now have a question for Philippe at UNESCO. Um, Philip. Your agency has long promoted the power of sport for peace and development. What are some of the unique ways that sports are contributing to achieving the sustainable development goals, particularly at the community level? UNESCO, um, as the United Nations lead agency for sport, promotes physical activity, physical education and sport as fundamental right for everybody. We see sport in its diverse forms, including Olympic elite competitions, but also grassroots sports, recreation, dance, and traditional sports and games. With this diversity and its unique language, sport helps people's physical and mental well-being. Moreover, sport has a unique educational role to bring our societies together, to unite them in shared emotions, and to transmit the values of inclusion, solidarity, and mutual respect. These are all necessary for achieving the SDGs from every corner in the world. We still need significant change at both community and system levels to promote local impact through civil society organizations, but also a favorable policy and economic environment that allows successful initiatives to be scaled up. That sounds uh, very ambitious and, and really important. I'm going to come back to you later, but first I'm going to go now to again to Mayor Yamamoto just to ask him um, whether his city, uh, Mebashi, has changed at all by becoming the host city of the South Sudanese team. What do you think the legacy of this experience will be? アフリカの遠いところから来てくれた若者たちが
、いろいろが勉強できたと思います。これから次のパリのオリンピックまでの間、前橋はまた南スーダンの若い選手たちを預かって、またこれから育てていける、そんな交流をこれからも続けていきたいと思います。Um, well, that is wonderful because South, South Sudan really needs international support、um, at, the, at its kind of troubled time.、Um, Abraham,、um, over to you now. What、uh, makes you just、uh, want to excel as an athlete? And is there anything particular about being South Sudanese、um, that has contributed to your motivation? Of course,、uh, being a South Sudanese to me is、uh, a big thing, and I am really always proud of being a South Sudanese and being from that country. And the representing、uh, the newest country,、uh, not only being the newest country, but a country that has a lot of challenges at the moment,、uh, representing such a country in this、uh, big level. Is something that is really huge and it s always、uh, g i v e us a lot of、uh, encouragement and always wish、uh, to do the best、uh, that I,、uh, we can do, that I personally can do as an athlete、uh, for my country. And not only for my country, also, there are people who have been given their chance、uh, to support us. It's not easy supporting the whole team for almost more than two years. And、uh, these people, the only way we can thank them is by really doing our best and getting very good results in the tournament. So I really feel encouraged by these two factors、uh, the fact that I'm representing a country that is having a lot of challenges in a very big event in the world, and the fact that also I am supported by another country outside、uh, my own country. Really gives me a lot of、uh, encouragement, and I feel I should really go hard and do my best、uh, to make these two sides happy and really never feel they wasted their support on me. Well, so, you have two populations rooting for you the population of South Sudan and the population of your host city. So, that,、exactly. that's wonderful. Just a quick follow up question I'm curious. Because I know,、um, you know conditions in South Sudan have been very difficult. There's been conflict and violence. And、uh, how, how was it for you as a young、um, athlete training? What were the conditions like、uh, in your home country? Yeah, conditions were hard, but、uh, since I was in another country,、uh, I was in Uganda as a student. Uh, so, but each time I went back to my country, it wasn't easy. Uh, first thing is, my home is very far from the ground, about 17 kilometers. I have to walk, and the country is very hot. So, if I start very early, it's not easy. And training coming back at night, and there is a lot of insecurity, and it wasn't easy. So, it's kind of very difficult. And also, the training facilities are not available. The ground is very hard and rough, and the, sometimes, even you train, you don't have anything to facilitate yourself, like maybe getting adequate food that you deserve or that you need to have the energy to train. Sometimes, even to get a soap that you can use. Like, you need money to buy soap as an athlete after training, you need to wash every time. It's, it's still also very difficult, and everything seems to be.、Uh, A problem to me each time I am training back home. And that was how hard it was. But with those, I never gave up. And very many athletes also, they don't give up. That's, it. so that's very inspiring, Abraham. Thanks for sharing that、uh, with you. And I've been to South Sudan and I can, I can imagine how, how difficult it was to train、uh, in those circumstances.、Um, Philip, I'm wondering what are the lessons?、Um, From the contributions that sport makes to peace and development, which is also relevant to a country like South Sudan,、um, that we can apply in our path to building back better from the COVID 19 pandemic? The, the COVID 19 pandemic has struck us when we already faced another one, which is the global physical inactivity pandemic. With dramatic data on especially young people not participating. In sport, in physical activity.
And very often we lose young girls and boys very early in the school because we can't offer them suitable quality physical education. So the core challenge is to invert this other pandemic and make people move for their physical, mental well-being and to really use the power sport can have for transmitting value, self-confidence, especially in situations of crisis, right? When you build back a country or build back a society that has been disrupted very severely by crises such as the COVID-19 pandemic, but also other social crises. So we need to use the power of sport, especially with young people at their early ages. And we need to more invest in physical education in schools because that's where we miss them right now. Now, the legacy of large-scale sport events, such as the Tokyo Olympic and Paralympic Games, is a fantastic opportunity to promote uh, uh, participation in sport at grassroots levels and to really demonstrate to them the values that can be transmitted with, with sport. What is your advice to the many viewers who have been impacted by the pandemic you know, from your particular sports perspective? In equality between girls and boys and women and uh, men that exists already in our society have been uh, um, impacted in a bad sense by this crisis. We have seen a lot of uh, women competition uh, stopped because of the pandemic, whereas the men competition has been uh, pers pursued. Uh, we have seen also a lot of sponsors uh, reducing their investment in uh, women's sports and also media who has uh, more uh, broadcast a men's sport as women's sport. So we have to uh, um, go back and fight again uh, for the women's sport being more uh, in prospective, being more in the day-to-day uh, -day life of uh, our citizens because uh, um, physical activity we have seen during the crisis is key to be able to um, uh, to uh, fight against pandemic, pandemia, and uh, to be uh, in good health. It's uh, really um, very important if we had to deal to cope again with that, with that kind of viruses. So uh, doing sport very early in our lives will um, uh, make us um, to be um, used to do it in our day-to-day -day life. And this is very important that even girls, even boys, even whatever are is your social um your social uh, situation, you have to do some physical activity in your day-to-day -day life. What have you seen, you know, from UNESCO's perspective, and the minister touched on this a bit, but how has the COVID-19 pandemic um, affected the sport, you know, situation for sports in the world, but also were there some silver linings? Was Were there some things that you... Uh, found were inspiring and that should be taken further as um, future lessons? Yes, we, we face a paradox uh, because on the one hand, uh, sport, physical activity and physical education have been severely disrupted from the crisis, right? More than 1.5 billion people didn't receive the education they normally receive. And that, of course, has struck mainly girls uh, uh, more than boys. So the inequalities have been exacerbated through the crisis. The good news is that the sport, physical activity and physical education are solutions for building resilience for the future. Right? So they're very timely propositions and we do see there's more awareness of sport being a solution for building our societies in a way uh, back better that will uh, 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 make people resist much better to such pandemics in the future. And the solution obviously is to get out of our silos. We have sport, we have education, we have health in different government departments, for example. We need to integrate the full proposition sport can make together with the ministries in charge of health and education, but also in employment, gender equality and social inclusion. And we do have a program that will integrate these different dimensions that will be officially launched at our general conference in November this year. It is called Fit for Life. And we are going to implement it together, of course, with many other UN agencies, member states, and sports organizations and civil society organizations. So we need to be thinking much bigger. The crisis is an opportunity to do so.
Excellent. Yes. And I think that it's great that there's going to be some way for people to get involved um, concretely. And certainly, I think we've all learned that those who were physically fit and active were better able to also physically withstand um, COVID-19. Um, I would like to come back to the mayor in our final round of questions and ask if he has any advice. Um, I know that Japan you know, is still is still living through the pandemic. Um, and, you know, is there any advice that you would like to give as mayor um, from from what you've learned and what you are learning to the viewers that are have tuned in and have been impacted by this pandemic?オークのアスリートを迎える Thank you very much, Mayor. And I have to say, it's it's quite an inspiration. And I hope everyone tuning in has been inspired by the example of your city hosting uh, the athletes from South Sudan for so long um, and giving them this, this opportunity and becoming also their fans and their supporters. So thank you. Thank you for that contribution. That That's really wonderful. Um, and. I would just um, like to go to our, our athlete, uh, Abraham, for his last word. I mean, I wonder, has, how has this pandemic impacted you? And, you know, what advice as an athlete, as an Olympian, would you give to people um, who have been affected and impacted by COVID-19? Thank you. I would say uh, it's a very difficult situation with this coronavirus as a uh, it has made a lot of, uh, it has caused a lot of challenges to many families around the world. Uh, it's not easy. And uh, I would like to tell the world that as a Christian, we always believe that there is no condition that is permanent and uh, everything comes and goes. And uh, hopefully uh, this situation is going to end. Let's keep our hope. And the, all we need to do is uh, to follow all the protective measures uh, so that we can be able to uh, protect ourselves uh, from getting into uh, this virus or from getting uh, infected with this. And the, we believe the challenges will end. Then to me personally, as an athlete, uh, it has actually, I would say, uh, though it has affected, but I would say it has affected me a little positive uh, in relation to my Olympics, because when I came, I was not adequately prepared and uh, it was a very short time. I was worried about how I was going to do and uh, it was very difficult. And uh, in this long time that we were given uh, to continue training here, I was able to improve and at least even manage to break my personal best. And uh, I feel right now that I am much, much getting better. And uh, also in terms of the activities that I'm doing at school, I am learning a lot. My Japanese is improving. My computer skills is improving. And uh, also I have got a lot of time to interact with so many citizens. I made a lot of friends. And there is uh, there are a lot of university guys that became my friends when I started training with them. And this uh, this training together started in 2021. Meaning, if uh, Olympics was held last year, I wouldn't have got to them. But because of the postponement, I made more friends. So actually, I would say it's positive on my side. Well, that's wonderful. So there are silver linings always, um, and and you have found them. And also thanks to to Japan uh, giving you this this opportunity. And and that's also so much in the spirit of the Olympics that new friends are made, new connections forged between nations and peoples and cultures. Um, so you set a wonderful example. And now the Olympics, the next Olympic and Paralympic Games are set for Paris in 2024. 
and they will bring younger and future generations to your country and the wider world. What do you hope for these next Olympics? Receiving these Olympic Games is um, um, the heritage uh, that it can bring to the country. And um, the first one is uh, the role of sport in education. In France, we don't have uh, that much um, physical activity in school. Um, and uh, would we like we would like to do a, a better link between uh, sport associations, sports clubs and uh, schools to make them work together. And uh, we have begun uh, for two years now uh, with uh, two sports, especially uh, dealing with security of children that are uh, swimming and um, cycling on the roads in entire security and uh, in swimming pools or uh, free uh, water uh, surfaces and be in uh, totally securely uh, movement. And uh, we have started that with a very uh, um, little age, at a very little age, beginning with three and four years old in all schools in France. And uh, this will be the beginning of a better um, collaboration between sport movement and schools. And of course, uh, our Olympic Games and Paralympic Games are very uh, um, implicated and dedicated to uh, um, sustainability objectives, to equality uh, of gender. And, uh, you know, this, there will be the first Olympic Games uh, with uh, equal uh, girls and equal men uh, competing in this competition. It is a symbol. And, uh, of course, of this um, um, visibility, we want, do, we want to do that in all our clubs, in all our sport movement. Uh, also speaking about governance, uh, in our institutions, we have uh, a woman at the head of the Olympic National Committee being elected, and we will be three women, Minister, um, Olympic uh, National Committee and Paralympic uh, National Committee, three women um, dealing with sport. And um, I think it's a great change. It's uh, already the um, heritage that we would like after the games, in fact, that begins uh, before. Thank you. And thank you to all of our panelists today. And this brings to an end both this individual session and the SDG zone in Tokyo. As we have heard, the pandemic has shown us that the values that sport promotes, such as solidarity, fairness, and respect to others is now more vital than ever. We have so many challenges in our world, but today's speakers have reminded us that we can still come together, not only one country, but across borders, within towns, within communities, and uh, here in Japan. Sport is a simple and enjoyable act and it can lift us all up. I hope this session has inspired all of you watching to also use the power of sports and making your world and our world a better and healthier place. Thank you and wishing all the best to you, especially good health.